Good morning and welcome to worship at First Baptist Church of Martinsville as we continue our Easter celebration in the season of Eastertide. For those here in the sanctuary, welcome back to Shared Space. For those joining us on our live stream, we continue to be the church from wherever we are. I have a few announcements for us this morning. First, I want to welcome any of our guests here with us today. We have children's worship bags available if you haven't already gotten one. We also have uh, some time for children's worship in just a little bit, which you'll get to see with some singing and dancing if you're on our live stream. I hope your children will join us for that time as well. I also want to extend our Christian sympathies to a couple of our church families today. First, we offer our sympathy to the family of Jim Barnett, who passed away on April the 2nd after a battle with cancer. His family says they will be making a memorial arrangement here at the church in the next couple of months, perhaps in May or June, and we will keep you updated about those plans as they are made. We also offer our sympathies to Martha Crawley, who recently lost her brother, Jim Wilkins. His funeral was on March the 26th, and so we continue to pray for Martha and her family in these days. Also, I have a couple of missions announcements for us today. First, I want to thank you, you'll see this in your bulletin as well, from our Women on Mission and Missions Committee for your generous giving to the CBF uh, offering for global missions this year. We had a goal of $2,500 and we surpassed it by just a little bit. We raised 2,537. So thank you so much for your generous giving these days. Now for April, our Women on Mission invites the entire congregation to join our new focus for missions, enhancing childhood literacy. Our church is partnering with United Way and Smart Beginnings Early Childhood Development Program. That's the program that oversees our Early Learning Center as well. And they will be sponsoring children to receive age and developmentally appropriate books every month from birth to age five years old. These books are free from Dolly Parton's Imagination Library, but a donation of $27 is needed to sponsor a child to cover postage and shipping for the books to be mailed directly to the child's home every month. We have approximately 1,700 children in Martinsville and Henry County, my own included, who receive these books from Dolly Parton's Imagination Library. And there are many more who could be registered for that. So to give to this important cause, you can drop your donation in the offering plate today, or you can give online at our website or drop it off here at the church office. Just put in the memo line, DP Imagination Library. To learn a little bit more about this opportunity, our Women on Mission has provided an intro video from Dolly herself to let us know about the inspiration behind this generous gift of childhood literacy. So now I will let us watch that together. Well, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, Honor thy father and thy, and thy mother. A lot of people think that means to obey, and maybe it does mean that as well. But to me, honor is a, a special word. And to bring honor to your family, to your parents or whatever, by the deeds that you do. You know, you honor them in that way. That's what, one of the reasons I wanted to have Dollywood, you know, to honor my, my family and my community, my people. But when I started the Imagination Library, it was to honor my daddy. My daddy was so smart, but he felt crippled with the fact that he couldn't read and write because he didn't get a chance to go to school. So many mountain people don't because they're born up there in those hills and those hollers and you have to walk for, you know, to a one-room school anyway. And usually there's so many kids in the family, you gotta stay home to help take care of them, work the fields, do whatever you gotta do. So my daddy never learned to read and write. And he, he was embarrassed by that. And we used to always say, Daddy, you know, there's a lot of people who don't know how to read and write. And he felt like he couldn't learn it after he was grown. And so um, I wanted to get him involved. When I got this idea to do the Imagination Library, I wanted to get Daddy involved in it. I wanted him to help me with that so he could take the pride in that. And so he did. And he got to live long enough for us to 
for to hear the kids call me the book lady and he got to see all the good stuff you know coming out of it and he took a lot of pride in that and he should have because he was really the inspiration for it and that's what I kept telling him everybody has a different purpose in life and if nothing else maybe this is why you couldn't read and write maybe God knew a long time ago you know that I was going to do something that would help millions of kids and people that couldn't read and write so I tried to give him that pride I hope that this cause, and like so many, our, our church supports will be one way that we can better serve our community and our world one child at a time. So thank you for your generosity in advance. Now, friends, as we enter this space and these moments of worship, may we feel God's presence. May we feel Jesus' peace among us. Let us worship together. Our call to worship this morning can be found on page 536 in your hymnal or in your worship folder. Open our eyes, Lord. Will you pray with me this morning? Resurrected God, though we have hidden ourselves in locked rooms, huddled together as one who build barriers, we ask today that you send your living word through our locked doors into our guarded hearts that we might be witnesses of your grace and couriers of your goodness to this world. By the power of your Holy Spirit, grant us the trust to believe the gospel, not just because we see it, but because we have been seen by it and transformed through it. We ask this all in the name of Jesus, who enters our locked rooms and changes our lives, and who taught us all to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you would please remain standing and we're going to sing crown him with many crowns.
Our Old Testament lesson today is Psalm 133, a song of ascents. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head, running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of the Hermon which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel lesson comes from the book of John, the John 20, verses 19 through 23. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Where are they? Where'd they go? Are they on that side? We'll do it. Yeah. Hopefully our kiddos will be back from their potty break. <laughs> Sometimes things just won't wait. It's true. It's true. <laughs> you want to go ahead and sing the next hymn and then wait on them? Yeah, why don't we Let's do that? Let's do that. How do y'all feel about that? We'll, we'll wait work. on our kiddos to come back. We'll let the spirit move. <laughs>
about that, Baxter? This is a, this is a praise song that uh, is not in our hymnal, strangely enough. Uh, but it's a wonderful little song called Holy Spirit, Rain Down. <laughs> well, we have Adeline. Uh, so let's go ahead and sing Holy Spirit, Rain Down, okay? We'll just do it backwards. Go ahead, Bax. Would you stand with me, please? apologize to you, but the pine pollen has gotten me. <laughs> All right. I think we're ready for children's worship now. What do you say, girls? What do you Come say? On. Come on. Let's sit down. Come and we'll on, invite everyone who's joined us virtually girl. as well for children's worship. Welcome, welcome. Come here, baby. There we go. All right. Yeah, it is your binky. <laughs> All right. You might want to take these out so we can sing later, okay? All right. Well, have you ever been afraid? Have you ever been scared? Have you been scared? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes we've been scared. Sometimes we might be scared of loud noises, or we might be scared of storms. I know those sometimes have scared Elena, and sometimes they've scared our puppy dogs, haven't they? <laughs> yeah. So what do you do when you're scared? Yeah, sometimes you might... Stuff. You I might hug your mommy and daddy, right? My boo -boo. Yeah, you might have them kiss your boo-boos when you're scared. <laughs> well, we know that after Jesus died, his friends were scared, and they were locked up in a room. They were afraid that somebody was going to hurt them too, like they hurt Jesus. But as we know, Jesus came back to life. And did you know that Jesus came into that locked room? And he talked to his very afraid disciples. And you know what he said? He said, peace be with you. Can you say peace? Peace. peace. Good job. 
Peace means calmness and gentleness. It's the very opposite of being afraid. It was, it's what we feel maybe when you get a hug from somebody who loves you. Jesus gave his peace to his friends. And then he told them, say, go love others and forgive them like I loved you. And that's pretty special, isn't it? When we are afraid, Jesus will give us peace. Can you remember that today? Peace. 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 Good job. Are you sing peace with me? Yeah, I think Miss Becky's got a song about peace. Do you want to sing that song with Miss Becky? Let's take this out so we can sing. Are you going to dance go. and sing? Here we go. Let's dance. Oh, it got out tune again. <laughs> I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. Love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain. Are you going to sing one more, or are you, are you going someplace? Y'all ready to sing another song? Sing deep and wide. You guys know I deep think and Baxter's going to play deep and wide. Yeah, first. let's come up here. Let's show everybody the motions. Come up here. Let's show everybody how to do the motions. Here, let me hold that paper for you. Okay. Ready? All right, ready? Let's get our arms together. Ready? ready? Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain. Deep and wide. Sing with us. Deep and wide. Do the motions. Deep and wide. There's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Now we're going to do it backwards, so don't get confused. You ready? Wide and deep. Wide and deep. There's a fountain flowing wide and deep. Adeline, wide. Okay, can we put our hands together and talk to God? Can you put our hands together? Let's talk to God for a minute. God, thank you for sending Jesus to give us peace and love us. Amen. 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 Good job, girls. <laughs> Here you go. Here you go. All right, y'all have a great day. You're next. We are grateful for the gift of children, for sure, in these days. They bring us such joy. Well, you guys know that we continue in odd days, though we are slowly uh, coming into our new normal. But our tithes and offerings still are a little different than they were. We have dropped our offering in the plates on the way in. Perhaps we've mailed our gifts or dropped them off here at the church. Maybe we gave online. But the result is the same, is it not? God takes all we have and multiplies it in his grace. So will you pray with me as we bless these tithes and offerings we present to God? God, you give us peace when we follow your ways. We ask in these moments 
as we present our gifts to honor you, that we would feel your everlasting peace, peace about our finances and our futures, peace about your kingdom's growth among us, peace about the beautiful ways you continue to surprise us, unlocking our doors to new possibilities. Amen. seated.
I can imagine that we have all experienced something akin to the disciples' reality after the crucifixion. One we all share is that we've spent the better part of the last year going very few places, many of us staying home for weeks or months at a time. We've had some very real and valid concerns, sometimes even fears, as we have watched so many in our world, in our community, fall dangerously ill or die from a horrible disease. Jesus' disciples also spent a large majority of the few days following the crucifixion hiding. They were hiding because they had some very real and valid concerns, even fear, as they hid from those who accused and then killed Jesus and might just be after them next. But thankfully, even though our doors are locked and we are afraid, Jesus can meet us in that locked room, overcoming our fears. For the disciples, they got to see his nail-scarred hands. They got to see the scars on his side. For us, we hear their witness, and we hold fast to that miracle they proclaim. And Jesus gives them and us more than just a visual of those execution scars. He also gives a word of peace. His presence and his words, they brought peace into that fearful silence after the resurrection. The scripture says that the disciples rejoiced when they saw their Lord. I'm guessing that for them it was the first sense of relief they'd had for days, they had been holding their breath. This was probably the first genuine smile they'd had in a long time. I think that I too have been feeling that way more and more recently. Since I received the second vaccine dose and completed the two weeks afterward to ensure its effectiveness, I too have breathed a little easier sometimes quite literally, as I can take my mask off in small groups of vaccinated people, sometimes figuratively too, and that I now worry less in a busy store that I might catch this horrible disease and accidentally spread it to someone I care about, or worse, start an outbreak here at this church. Every time a new study confirms that I'm safe again to hug other vaccinated people and that this era of mask wearing and social distancing isn't forever. I feel like the first time in a year, I have a sense of calm about me. I can smile a little more widely, a little more genuinely. I still have that heavy responsibility of caring for others as pastor, and that will always be with me. But at least, at least now I can start to feel a little bit less like part of that care is protecting everyone from a rampant virus that we only barely understood a year ago this time. So yeah, this year, disciples, I get it. <laughs> I get that exhale that they're doing when Jesus appears behind locked doors and says, peace be with you. But of course, while the pandemic waning is helpful in getting us back out of our locked houses, as evidenced by those of you here today, it doesn't quite ask of us what Jesus was asking the disciples standing in this house in this text. Jesus came with more motive than just cal calming the disciples' souls and letting them know he's still alive. No, he came with a job for them to do. One pastor I read as I studied for this, I think he said it as well as it could be said. There is no fear near Jesus, but that doesn't mean you can relax. Elie Wiesel once famously said, if an angel ever says, be not afraid, you better watch out. A big assignment's on the way. <laughs> Jesus comforts with one hand, and then shoves them out into hard labor, even danger with the other. These disciples and we today have work to do, requiring some courage 
and some peace. I think that Jesus was, of course, this entire last year for us, asking us behind our literal locked doors to do this task, but in new ways, right? With new circumstances, we had to be creative and imagine with God. But I think this image of locked doors today, as we unlock the doors literally, is even more poignant. Jesus comes behind our locked doors, grants us peace, and then says, as I have been sent, so I now send you. This kind of peace that Jesus gives the disciples isn't one for complacency. It's not the peace we get at the beach with our feet up, enjoying the sun and the sand, though I, heart, I wholeheartedly believe that God does, in fact, grant us that kind of peace sometimes, too. No, this peace that Jesus gives the disciples, this is to ease their troubled minds so that they could focus on the work that has to be done. It's the peace that means you cannot remain behind locked doors. You have to get out and do some work. And whether you're still doing that work virtually or have ventured out in person as this pandemic wanes, it's the kind of working peace we have all been given by our risen Savior. First Baptist has, during this season, had a hashtag that we've used on social media. For those of you who may not know much about hashtags, basically it's a word or a phrase that is stuck right after the hash sign or the little pound sign like you have on a telephone. And it follows the wording of a post on the social media. And what it does is it identifies different topics or slogans if you're on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. And for our church, the hashtag that we used was hashtag the open church. And we said it from the start of the pandemic. At the time, we had to literally lock doors for safety. We had to separate physically for a time, but our church never stopped being open. We never stopped being open for ministry and service, for worship and study, for care and love. We just did it in new ways. And we did that because Jesus said, you've got the Holy Spirit, now you've got a commission. You have a work to do. So now, a year later, as we both figuratively and literally unlock the doors, I think I hear that call even more because we've learned so much. It's a call that transforms us from disciples, people who follow the teachings of Jesus, to apostles, people who go out and share that good news that Jesus taught us through his life, his death, and his resurrection. We are pushed out the doors of our church buildings, our virtual Bible studies, our small groups, into a world that needs to hear this message of God's unfailing love and forgiveness. And I think that last bit shouldn't be lost on us. Jesus tells these disciples turned apostles that they're going into the world to forgive sins, to remind the world that God has given up everything to forgive us the ultimate sacrifice, because God loves us so stinking much, he would give up his very life. And I think that love, that love that we should share, that sacrificial love Jesus gives us, it should come in many forms as we go out. God certainly not only confronted the personal sins of people when Jesus came to die, but also collective sins as systems that caught people up in shouting, crucify him, were as much to blame as the individual people themselves. Bishop Michael Curry of the Episcopal Church says, love is a firm commitment to act for the well-being of someone other than yourself. It can be personal or political, individual or communal, intimate or public. Love, as I read it in the Bible, is ubiquitous. It affects all aspects of life. Friends, love forgives in spite of everything. Jesus taught that, and Jesus called the disciples turned apostles to live that in this moment. 
And that kind of forgiveness, that's a powerful thing. It not only wipes the slate clean for people, but it starts them on a new journey. One that doesn't come with all the baggage of past hurt, past traumas, past wrongdoings. The disciples here are given the Holy Spirit to go and share that kind of slate-wiping, unselfish love with the whole world. And it's that hard work of healing that can make this world just a little bit more like the kingdom of God come to earth. Our mission as a church together is to share this kind of love, a love that reaches beyond stereotypes and labels, that forgives like Jesus did, that offers new beginnings of resurrection promises this Easter season and beyond. So hear me as your pastor today. We are unlocking the doors. Yes, literally, but also in ways that we haven't for years or maybe ever. We've already unlocked the doors to our online campus through live streaming and Zoom meetings. And now we're going to continue to unlock doors, probably some we don't even realize are there yet. Jesus says to us this Easter season, I'm here, here's my peace, here's my call to you to unlock the doors and go. Let's get this work of love out of our locked doors and into a world that needs to hear this story of radical forgiveness, of grace that's free, of a new start that has the power to transform life from horrible to honorable, from fearful to peaceful, from humdrum to purposeful. I know God is not through with us, First Baptist. I know God is calling us out of these locked doors today and in the future. Amen. God offers an invitation in worship. We open our hearts to hear God's call through Jesus Christ on our lives. Whether it's our personal lives or perhaps we're hearing a call on behalf of our church. If you are sensing a call from God to a new way of living, you are invited to come and meet me here at the front during the final hymn. Maybe it's the day today that you have made a decision to follow Jesus as disciple so that you can become an apostle. Maybe this is the day you would like to join with the work of First Baptist Church as we unlock our doors. Or maybe at this moment you're not sure what it is you're sensing, but you want to pray. Friends, you are welcome here at the front. Come. Our commitment hymn today is Breathe on Me, Breath of God. If you would, please stand.
Hear now the benediction. Peace be with you, Jesus says to us in this space. As the Father sent me, so I send you. No doubt or fear can lock God out of our lives. Remember that as you leave this space, sent forward to live by faith and sharing Christ's love and forgiveness to the whole world. Thank you.